How have we humans finally become gods? Well, just like God created us humans from a part of himself recently, scientists at Columbia University created a mini clone of a cancer patient to save their life. A perfect copy of a real human. This was done to test how the original patient's body would react to chemotherapy. But what does this tiny human clone, this carbon copy of a human, actually look like? Is it even alive now? And isn't human cloning banned or illegal in most countries? Known cloning techniques to actually create a human being is untested, unsafe, and morally unacceptable. What loophole are these scientists and even some companies using to create secret human clones? And if that's the case, isn't it possible that many of these clones are secretly living among us today? Well, modern science has advanced so much now that many of us have no idea about it. And this was just a glimpse of the latest technology. Recently, a PhD student from the UK, Alexia Lopez, discovered a massive mega structure in the universe. Add to a structure that according to the principles of physics shouldn't even exist. This massive structure is called the Big Ring and we'll discuss in more detail how it could advance our understanding of the universe. But as much as science is progressing on a large scale today, even more interesting technology has been developed on a micro scale. Watch this video carefully to see how this spring-like microscopic thing is spinning rapidly on its own and how it can rejuvenate a sluggish sperm, meaning that it can grab and push it inside the egg. Do you know what this thing is? Well, it's a tiny robot, a nanorobot or nanobot that scientists have designed specifically to target and destroy cancer cells. You'll find out exactly how scientists are doing this in just a few minutes and it's going to blow your mind. Just like in the last century, there have been many remarkable discoveries and inventions in this century that are set to change the world. But no one has paid much attention to them because we are too busy with Instagram. Let's start with the first big discovery, the Big Ring. Look towards the north at night. If you carefully observe between the Booties constellation and the Ursa Major constellation, you will see a large ring-like structure. This is known as the Big Ring. It is so massive that estimates suggest that to measure its width, we would need to arrange about 13,000 Milky Way galaxies in a straight line. And this exact fact goes completely against the principles of physics. Let me explain how. In science, we have an old theory called the cosmological principle, which states that on a larger scale in this universe, no space or location is special. Everywhere you will almost see the same things and all the laws of physics will work in the same way. According to this principle, about 13.8 billion years ago, when the Big Bang happened, which by the way, if you don't know, gave birth to our universe within microseconds, all the energy that was confined in a single point exploded like shrapnel from a bomb, spreading in all directions. This led to the formation of atoms like hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. This is why, if you look closely at the early radiation of the universe, known as cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMBR for short, you will see that except for some small dark spots here and there, the radiation is spread equally in all directions. However, the recently discovered megastructure called the Big Ring goes completely against this cosmological principle because it represents a special place in the universe where a significant amount of mass is concentrated. If we had found only one such structure, it could be dismissed as an anomaly or perhaps scientists could have made an error in their measurements. But scientists have found three more structures like this, the Clouds Group, the Great Wall and the Giant Arc which are all almost as large. So, what now? You may ask, what difference does it make if the cosmological principle is disproven? Why should we care whether the universe is equally distributed or not? Well, without the cosmological principle, our already tough physics calculations will become 10 times harder. For instance, when you conduct an experiment on Earth today and repeat it five years later, even if it's in the same lab, in those five years, our Earth, along with the solar system, our Milky Way galaxy, and the local group in which the galaxy is embedded, will have moved millions, if not billions, of kilometers in space. Now, if without the cosmological principle, which states that the laws of physics are the same everywhere, we would have to consider our current position in space for every experiment conducted on Earth to ensure accurate calculations. This basically means that this single discovery has challenged our entire understanding of physics and the universe. 
And now, only time will tell how scientists can help us navigate out of this unique pothole. Now, let's move on to the next major scientific achievement, which is the nanobots. The human body is quite complex as it may be. There are many surgeries where avoiding complications is extremely difficult. For example, right next to our ear, there is a parotid gland. If a tumor develops in this gland and it needs to be removed, performing such a surgery can be extremely tricky, even for experienced surgeons. If the facial nerve gets accidentally cut while removing the tumor, half of the patient's face could become paralyzed. Similar dangers are present during thyroid operations as well. If, by mistake, the recurrent laryngeal nerve is cut, which controls our vocal cords, the patient could become permanently mute. Now, humans are only human. Mistakes can happen to anyone. That's why for many years, medical professionals have been desperate to minimize the need for invasive procedures so that patients do not end up suffering more from the treatment than from the illness itself or regret undergoing it. Recently, scientists have developed nanobots that can be injected into your body just like a drug. These nanobots can target tumors, whether in the parotid gland, thyroid, or anywhere else, without causing complications. This sperm nanobot fusion we discussed earlier has recently been upgraded by scientists to develop a new treatment. They loaded sperm cells with a toxic anti-cancer drug called doxorubicin hydrochloride. Then, using nanobots made of iron oxide, they magnetically controlled the nanobots to pick up the anti-cancer sperms and guide them to penetrate cancer cells like a suicide mission to kill them. This effectively eliminates the two major side effects of the anti-cancer drug. Previously, anti-cancer drugs would damage surrounding healthy tissues, and these drugs would mix with body fluids and become diluted, making the treatment ineffective. But with this new technology, where we send our own sperms on a suicide mission, both of these problems are resolved. This has made it a highly effective drug delivery system. So to all the cancer patients out there, I would just say, hang in there very soon. Curing your cancer could soon be as easy as getting an injection at a nearby clinic. And now, let's move on to the next big achievement, miniature nuclear batteries. Imagine a phone that never needs charging, a remote or watch that never requires a battery change, and a camera that doesn't die in the middle of capturing your best moments. Well, guess what? This could actually be possible in the next four to five years. A Chinese company, Beijing Betavolt New Energy Technology, is they have developed a nuclear-powered battery that is as small as a coin, but once manufactured, can power your devices for up to 50 years without any charging or maintenance. Recently, the World Nuclear Association also promoted this on their official LinkedIn handle. Seeing this, the people at Beijing Betavolt are optimistic about launching these nuclear-powered batteries in the market by 2025. So how does it work? Well, it contains a radioactive isotope of nickel called nickel 63, which is placed between two synthetically made diamond layers. When nickel 63 decays, it releases radioactive decay and high energy beta particles or simply high speed electrons. These electrons knock out electrons from the atoms of the diamond, ejecting them out. This results in an accumulation of electrons on one side of the diamond structure and a deficit on the other. By connecting these two regions with a wire, an electric current begins to flow. Technically, this is exactly how solar cells, but the difference is that instead of using photons from sunlight to knock out electrons, this technology uses beta particles from a radioactive isotope. You might wonder, given that nuclear power typically requires large power plants with thousands of safety precautions and cooling systems, how Beijing Betavolt managed to fit this into a coin-sized battery. Well, the answer lies in the fact that unlike traditional nuclear power plants, where nuclear energy is first converted into thermal energy and then into electrical energy, using the strong nuclear force, which is the third fundamental force of nature. In contrast, Beijing Betavolt's technology directly converts nuclear energy into electrical energy using the weak nuclear force, which is the fourth fundamental force of nature. Hence, these batteries are very small, but still involve radioactivity. So, what about safety? Radioactivity often raises concerns, and the first thing that comes to mind when you hear radioactive is cancer concerns. However, because the battery uses nickel-63, which is powered by the weak nuclear force, it emits low-penetration beta particles. 
These particles are not as dangerous as the strong nuclear force used in traditional nuclear plants with uranium-235 cores. After penetrating substances like diamonds, there's virtually no chance that these beta particles will penetrate the protective casing of the beta vault battery. So, the safety concerns with this technology are minimal, making it a viable and secure option for long-lasting power solutions. Overall, these next-generation batteries will be quite safe, but as an extra precaution, BetaVault will initially supply these batteries only for medical devices and space tech. After thorough testing, we may see them in common consumer products. Now, let's move on to our fourth and the most important achievement, a cloning breakthrough. As we discussed earlier for many years, human or even animal cloning was considered illegal. However, recent developments have brought some surprising news. A secret cloning industry seems to have flourished, with people making substantial profits from it. How is this happening? Well, back in 1996 to 97, when the first cloned animal, Dolly the Sheep, was introduced, some scientists immediately wanted to test this cloning technology on humans. They believed it could help infertile couples. Around the same time, an American cloning company named CloneAid emerged, and it quickly adopted the somatic cell nuclear transfer technique used for Dolly and began using nuclear transfer techniques on humans as well. In this technique, they would take tissue samples from parents and remove the nucleus from one set of cells. Then they would inject the nucleus from another tissue sample into these cells. Afterward, the cells that began to multiply from these samples were grown to the embryo stage and implanted into a surrogate mother's uterus. Ultimately, the child born from this process would be an exact clone of the parent, which looked like a carbon copy of the parent from whom the nucleus was taken. Simply put, it was like having a twin from a different timeline. Using this technology, cloned CEO Brigitte Boisselier claimed that they had already created at least 20 human clones with the first baby named Eve, born on December 26, 2002. This means that today, Eve might be a 22-year-old college student living among us, possibly unaware that she is a clone. Even though cloning is banned, the secrecy surrounding these developments raises many questions. It's possible because human cloning is banned in only 46 out of 195 countries. Therefore, CloneAid and other entities have developed Eve and other clone babies outside the USA. Moreover, while human cloning is prohibited in these countries, animal cloning is not. Many nations are actively conducting animal cloning trials to refine the technology. In fact, you might not be aware, but many foreign celebrities are reportedly involved in or supporting such cloning research, further fueling speculation about the clandestine progress in this field. People collect tissue samples of their pets at the end of their lives and send them to US-based Viagen Pets, China-based Sinogene, or South Korea-based Sombiotech. Within just two to three months, cloned puppies of their deceased pets are delivered to their homes. This means that today we have advanced so far in cloning that if the ban were to be completely lifted, we could create an exact carbon copy clone of any human being. In fact, earlier I mentioned the scientist from Columbia University who I mentioned scientists who created a miniature clone of a cancer patient. Well, that demonstrates our capability in human cloning. The lead scientist of this research, Professor Gada Van Jagnavko and his team, first grew tissues from the patient's heart, bone, liver, and skin in four separate compartments. They then connected these tissues using artificial blood vessels and circulated the patient's blood through them. After that, they tested the anti-cancer drug doxorubicin and compared it with real-life human trials. The findings showed that the miniature organ system reacted exactly the same way as the actual human body does during clinical trials with doxorubicin. In short, if there weren't ethical concerns, we are that close to being able to create human life or replicate complex human systems. So friends, be sure to share this video with your friends and family members. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Until then, take care.